Welcome to Taiwan Talk. I'm Jian Li. Taiwan is known for its butterflies. The island averages about 300 species, which are easily spotted. This week, we hear from Professor Xu Yufeng, a biologist at the National Taiwan Normal University, who has dedicated more than 50 years of his life to the little creatures that Taiwan is famous for around the world. Many children, including my son, they started off with a, a passion for insects. But then as they grow up, they would gradually lose interest in, you know, the, the, these little bugs. But you have obviously maintained your passion about the insects. And why do you think that the, the reason for that is? I think I have been fascinated by, by, by the butterflies and moths actually not only butterflies and moths, but also all insects. So, so when, when I was a kid, I actually I was interested in all kinds of insects. So uh, I, always, I always found it fascinating that they perform such a dramatic metamorphosis. So they, they change from one form to another. And I, I, I've been always curious, why? So I try, try to find out. I made some findings and uh, piece by piece. So the curiosity actually drove me to continue my work. Actually. When I was a kid, there was no, in, no internet. So it, it was very difficult for, for me to, to get information for insects. I, ha- I had to figure out the information for myself. I have to observe and do some uh, recording, something like that. Uh, I was kind of lucky because when I was a high school kid, uh, I, I could not find many reference books, you know, so I actually I wrote letters to uh, specialists back in Japan or the other country, and uh, luckily they all all those specialists uh, all over the world they, they were so kind. So so they they, they would answer my my questions. So I actually got encouraged. I see. And then you pursue the um, the major in in insects when you entered college, and then went on to... Oh, no, not, not really. I decided to become an entomologist at the age of eight. That's was very in, early. Uh, yeah, very early. I, I already decided I should become an entomologist. And fortunately, I, I did it. So of all the insects in the world, there must be, I don't know, millions or billions kinds of insects. Why did you choose butterflies? Oh. Oh, at first I was, uh, as I already mentioned, I was interested in all kinds of uh, insects. Even when I was uh, in college, I still collected like beetles or dragonflies and, 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 do, and all, the, all those uh, insects. However, I decided that uh, if I want to go deep to, to know more about uh, insects, I have to focus on a certain group. All, of all those insects, I always prefer butterflies because when I was a kid, I saw a, I saw a chrysalis, you know, the pupa of uh, the purple crow butterfly. And, and, and that kind of pupa is metallic and shining. So I was, I was amazed and moved. I couldn't forget that feeling when, when, I, when I saw it for the first time. So finally, I decided, okay, butterflies will be the focus. For, for, uh, for, for my research. I came to, <laughs> to know that some of the chrysalis or pupa for moths are pretty, are beautiful as well. Yes. So I also, actually, I also studied moths. <laughs> you know, I studied both, both butterflies and moths. And actually, when I went to the U.S. for my degree, I took moths as my, the topic of my dissertation. I actually, when, when I finished my dissertation, uh, I actually uh, described and named 25 new species of Heliodinus moth of North America, not Taiwan. <laughs> That's really amazing. <laughs> kind of funny, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I spent a lot of time in the deserts in Arizona, California, Baja California, and New Mexico, and, and studying those uh, small moths. Yeah. <laughs> Did you like it? Ah, I really love it. <laughs> I, tra- tra- I travel, you know, all over the place. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Have you paid any attention to the butterflies there in the States while you were there as a graduate student? 
Oh yes, of course. <laughs> I actually also uh, try try to uh, study some butterflies of North America, and eventually I found a new one in in Baja California of Mexico. So I actually describe a new butterflies from Mexico. <laughs> So, how many species of butterflies have you seen in person with your own eyes? Can you? Oh, I, I, I don't know <laughs> because I have traveled all over the world for butterflies, so I, I could not really count. You know. <laughs> uh, I understand that in Taiwan, the the common butterfly, the butterflies that you can reasonably possibly see is around 300, 300 species of butterflies. Yeah, something like that, know. yes. And you have seen them all? No, not really. Too, too bad. I try. <laughs> I, I think I have seen like 98%, 99%, but not all of them. Some species already went extinct. I, I, I had no chance, uh, no opportunity. And on, on the other hand, uh, there are some species really peculiar and special. For example, there is a species called, we call the so-called the uh, Tayo has chick. And uh, that species is supposed to live near Taipei, I mean, in the Wulai area. It is a canopy species, live high up uh, in, in, you know, in the tree. So I've been trying to look for them for the past 10 years. Yeah. So far, no luck. But you do know that they exist. They they have not gone extinct. Yeah, yeah, yes. Some uh somebody took a photo of it, like like fifteen years ago, something you know. So it it is still there, and 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 the uh, habitat has not changed over there. And, and uh, uh, over these past ten years, I think we totally got four eggs of that species, eggs. But only one egg hatched, and the only one egg uh, that hatched died of the larva in second instar. So as a result, I got nothing. <laughs> so I, I think that species is just so difficult to reach. And the, the tree, the leaf, is like over 20 meters above, above the ground. So <laughs> to me, it is really uh, something to challenge, you know. There's the the purple crow butterfly. That's yes, it's famous. Amazing. It's famous because each year the the one section of the number three freeway would be closed just to make way for them. And so I was fascinated by this kind of report as well, and and wonder if this kind of butterfly is the only migratory butterfly in Taiwan. Not really. We got another species uh, called the chestnut tiger. That species of butterflies is also the night butterfly, the, the milkweed butterfly. And, and that species has been proved being able to uh, migrate between Japan and Taiwan, and sometimes even goes to eastern China, Hong Kong, and uh, northern Philippines. So they, they actually uh, travel long distance. Uh, when you say chestnut tiger, this species in Chinese, what is it? or the only reason that's driving these butterflies to migrate is the weather, right? Uh, main, mainly, uh, the, the winter, winter gathering of these butterflies uh, is really a very uh, magnificent phenomenon. So each year in, in, uh, in the fall and in the winter, if you go to Maolin in, in southern Taiwan, uh, you, you can see a lot of, the, you know, a huge number of, of these purple crow butterflies overwintering there. However, if the weather getting warmer and warmer, then they don't have to migrate. Then, then this phenomenon will disappear. That's, that's what we are afraid of. Has it started? Is it an ongoing thing uh, right now? Or you are just afraid that it might happen in the no, future? No, I, I, I think it, it is happening because the, the number we, we found in the winter inside is getting, the number is, is decreasing. Last winter, we did not see too many individuals, you know, compared to the past. E.O. Wilson, the person, of course, that uh, you are fully aware of, he has said that there's no better high than discovery. So what are your biggest discoveries so far during your career? Oh, that's, that's a very difficult question, right? Uh, to me, uh, all findings are interesting, <laughs> but some, some findings may be 
more significant or important in in some uh, aspects. Uh, for example, I discovered a species called the Kwafu hestrick, and that species is specialized on the Taiwan beach. And Taiwan beach is a endangered plant, a relic plant. This butterfly can serve as an indicator for the health of that forest. Because of these butterflies can only feed on that plant and rely on the big population of that of that tree. And that tree is is a temperate plant. So when when a global global warming continue, the population of that tree uh, will become fragmented, and some trees may die. And when the size of the forest uh, reduced to certain extent, these butterflies will disappear. So it can serve as a good biological indicator for the health of the forest of the Taiwan beach. Continue. Do you expect to to make new discoveries, a new species of butterfly in Taiwan in the future? That will be very difficult because uh, Taiwan has a history of butterfly research for over 150 years. I think we 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 know most of the species already. Actually, the last new species we found was in 2009. That, that's more than 10 years ago. Uh, with so many <coughs> naturalists in Taiwan right now, we could not find anything new after 2009. So I think it's going to be very difficult. Not impossible, but very difficult. What will you say to a child who's passionate about bugs and like butterflies or, or beetles and, and things like that and aspire to be an expert in the field? What will you say to him or her? Okay, I will say, if you are really interested in insects or any other kind of organisms, I think if you listen to your heart and believe in yourself, and you you spend your energy and your time uh, to study them, eventually you will find something nobody else knows. You are going to be the specialist in this field. And when you reach to that level, believe me, you will find a way to have a career because you are the only one. You, you, you cannot be replaced by anybody else. And the world always needs scientists, always needs biologists to convert all those insects and all other organisms into knowledge. I, I think if you feel you love them, you, you can make it. You know, I have seen many, many cases. You know, some of my, my friends, I thought if they persist, if they continue, eventually they will find a job, they will find a career. So I think if you really love them, don't give up, okay? That was Professor Xu Yifeng, an entomologist at the National Taiwan Normal University. That's it for this week's edition of Taiwan Talk. I'm Jiang Li. Thank you for tuning in.